In this section, we're going to discuss the common ion effect. The extent of ionization of a weak acid or a weak base can be diminished by the addition of a soluble salt of that acid or base. Why does this happen? Because the added anion or cation shifts the equilibrium toward the reactant. Because the resulting solutions will contain the same anion or cation, this is called the common ion effect. So let's consider an aqueous solution of acetic acid. If acetate ion is added to the solution, Le Chatelier's principle predicts that the equilibrium will shift to the left toward the reactant acetic acid. This product will be demonstrated in the following sample problem. Notice the effect of the pH of a 0.2 molar solution of HF when some sodium fluoride is added to it. Okay, so in part A of this first sample problem, we're just going to calculate the pH of a 0.2 molar HF solution if the Ka for HF is 6.8 times 10 to the minus fourth. Remember from our chapter on equilibrium, we can do this using an ice table by making note of what are the concentrations of reactants and product initially, what is the change in concentration, and then what is that concentration at equilibrium. So our initial concentration is just the 0.2 molar HF. We have no molar, moles per liter of H3O plus and no moles per liter of F minus. Now, what is the change? We have a one to one to one stoichiometry here of all of our reactants and products. So for whatever amount HF it decreases by, and we'll call that amount X, then the concentration of H3O plus and F minus will increase by that same amount X. So for my change here, I just have minus X for HF, plus X and plus X for H3O plus and F minus. Okay, why are we not writing the water? Well, remember that for a pure liquid um, or pure solid, the concentration at equilibrium is considered unchanged and so we can leave it out of our equilibrium expression. So putting these two rows together for initial and change, we can say that equilibrium the concentration of HF is the initial concentration minus X, 0.2 minus X, and H3O plus and F minus both have a concentration of X. We'll assume that X is much, much less than 0.2 molar, so that the HF concentration at equilibrium is the same as the initial concentration, 0.2 molar. So let's write our Ka expression concentration of product H3O plus times concentration of X, F minus divided by the concentration of the reactant HF is equal to the Ka value 6.8 times 10 to the minus fourth. Then I just substitute what my ice table says at equilibrium. So the concentration of H, H3O plus is X. The concentration of F minus is also X. So that's why I have X squared x times x over the concentration of HF is 0 0.20, okay? From here we just solve for x and we get 0 0.012. Now we have to remember what does x equal? Well, we set x equal to the concentration of both the hydrogen ion H3O plus and the fluoride ion F minus and then we can find the pH. Remember that pH is the negative log of the hydrogen ion concentration. So the negative log of 0 0.012 gives us a pH of 1.93. Okay, let's continue this same sample problem, but add the common ion effect and see what does that do to the pH. So calculate the pH of the same 0.2 molar HF solution that also contains 0.1 molar NaF. The Ka for HF is still the same, and my Ka expression from the previous part is still the same. Okay, so we use the same equation and the same Ka expression as before and set up a similar ice chart. But what's the difference? So we have 0.2 molar HF and we had 0.1 molar NaF. 
So that's a soluble salt, right? Meaning that it dissociates completely into Na plus and F minus. So we can't say that the initial concentration of F minus is zero. We have to account for it. So the initial concentration of F minus is 0 0.10 molar. Then let's continue our ice table and say that the change is minus X for the reactant and plus X for both products given the stoichiometric coefficients. And again, to simplify the problem here, let's assume that X is much, much less than both 0.1 and 0.2, so that the equilibrium concentrations of F minus and HF are essentially the same as their initial. So we can ignore this minus X and this plus X by making this simplifying assumption. Okay, let's substitute our concentrations at equilibrium into our Ka expression. The Ka given was 6.8 times 10 to the minus fourth equals the concentration of F minus, which we said was 0.1 times X over the concentration of HF, which is 0.2. And we solve for X, we get 1.4 times 10 to the minus 3. Now what is x? What is this x we're solving for? Well, that x is the H3O plus ion concentration. So we can solve for the pH. pH is the minus log of that concentration. And we get a pH of 2.87. Okay, so let's compare our results for the two-part problem that we solved in sample problem one. When we just had HF in the solution, we have a pH of 1.93. When we have both HF and NAF in the solution, we have a pH of 2.87. And you can see that the concentration of H3O plus from here to here has decreased. So why does that happen? How can we uh, use Le Chatelier's principle to support our results here? Well, by adding this F minus to the solution, which we did in the second part, we shift the equilibrium back toward the reactants, toward the left. And in doing so, we see this concentration decrease. Okay? And if we decrease the H3O plus concentration, we would expect the pH to increase. So the addition of F minus shifts the equilibrium to the left. This reduces the concentration of the products, including the H plus. Reducing the H plus results in an increase in pH.